Hi, everybody. Karen Tralfa here with Stampers Club. And today I have a great, great card to share with you using the Changing Leaves stamp set and, and matching dye and hybrid embossing folder. I know it's a lot, right? And if you haven't used one of these hybrid embossing folders, let me tell you, they are amazing. And they really, really, really take your card up a super notch, right? Let me show you what some of these things look like. So the Changing Leaves stamp set is a great fall set with a variety of different um, greetings that have different fonts also, but some very basic leaves, right? But it comes with this hybrid embossing folder and die set. So this is a double die, right? You get a lot. And this large one is the one that we're going to be using today, along with some of these other little elements. But the fun part is, is that when you cut your paper, this is actually going to go in this and then through the big shot. You're going to love how this works. I know, scary. You think you're going to cut this up, but you're not going to. And I'll show you how it works. Let me set this aside. And I'm going to show you an alternate version of that same exact card. So I'm going to do this in blues rather than the yellows. And I'm starting out with a half a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So it's eight and a half by five and a half. If you are not in the United States or don't use imperial measurement, um, I'm sure you can take your whatever it is you buy. And yes, four and a quarter. We're going to score this at four and a quarter, which is halfway. You could just fold the paper in, in half if you wanted to. I like to score it. I get a little bit better of a sharp, sharp line. And I'm going to kind of just hold the bottoms together and take my bone folder and swipe across just to give it that nice super crease. Now, on top of that, I'm going to add a piece of this splendid autumn designer paper. Now, this paper is um, six by six, but it has these beautiful patterns, these scenery patterns on them. Little walkway in the into the colorful leaf wooded area. So lots of patterns. I think there's 12 in all. And then the flip sides are these a little bit more basic, kind of muted tone, tone on tone. I'm just going to add that to my card base. Now, all of um, the Splendid Autumn is in the mini catalog currently, but the Changing Leaves bundle is actually an online exclusive product. Now, I call them online extras because you can certainly order them from me. You don't have to, you know, only go online and buy them, which you can do over at stampersclub.com. Hit the shop now button and then look for the online exclusives category. There is an absolute amazing number of stamps and papers and things like that that are just absolutely beautiful. This is another piece, and I just mounted that on some lemon lolly. And this is Azure Afternoon. And I'm putting on, on a piece of blueberry bushel. You gotta, you gotta love the names of our cardstock, right? They come up with some, some crazy names. But I liked the combination of this light and the dark. And one thing I do like about Stampin' Up's cardstocks is they do coordinate. All other colors kind of complement one another. Now, this piece here, I'm going to grab my Stampin' Diamonds, a.k.a. Dimensionals. Ha! But they're my little diamonds. You guys know that. And we are going to add a couple here. The one in the middle just for good luck, right? Not that we, we all need good luck. Everybody needs good luck. Get these peeled off here and make sure my flower is at the top. I'm not putting it on upside down. Not that I haven't been known to do that and then start peeling apart my project to fix it. So what I'm missing here is a piece of the Azure Afternoon cardstock. So. Let me open up this messy closet and find that. Is uh, you would need to get this piece of that. See, my craft room is very small here in Florida. I don't know how about you guys, but I, you know, I don't have a lot of space in my place here, so I basically store my stuff in the uh, 
in the closet and then I kind of work on a small table in front of it. Not exactly huge high tech, right? So I'm just getting a, another piece of the Azure Afternoon cardstock, and I'm going to show you how that embossing works. Let me set this aside so I can get my stamp and cut and emboss out here. I'm going to actually flip this around so I can get the... Uh... All right. So what I need here is I only need the base plate, no shims, and the gray impression mat that comes with this. So the machine comes with everything that you need. That's I, And it folds up. It's great. It just folds up for easy storage and taking it with you. Now, the what I'm talking about with this embossing folder is when you open this up, and it's usually the side that's got the, lay, the Stampin' Up! logo in it, and you're going to lay, yes, this way. And you're going to lay the um, the die over the image with your cutting at cutting up the cutting edges up, and it kind of locks in there. So if I if I lift this out, you'll see it kind of slides around, but it will find its happy spot right where the images are right in there. So it just kind of locks in there. And then I just want this leaf, so I'm just going to lay my piece of cardstock right over the top of that leaf. Lay it on my base plate, put my impression pad over the top. You always want to make sure that you have something above and below your embossing folders so that they don't get warped. That's if you don't put it something over the top of them, sometimes they'll they'll tend to warp. My table's shaking because it's not really even a sturdy table. That out of the way, and we'll show you how we did not cut. Even though this is a cutting edge, we did not cut the folder. We didn't damage it in any way. But we ended up with this really beautiful leaf. Get out of the way. Clean that mess up later. This very beautiful leaf that is embossed and die cut out at one time. Isn't that adorable? I know it's hard to tell with the camera, but you got this nice impression in there. So it's very leaf-like, right? Even though it's blue, because we all have blue leaves, right? <laughs> I know, funny. All right, so this, I'm going to grab just one dimensional, and I'm going to put it kind of in the middle of the leaf here. And then, oh, oh, like that, okay? Then I've already die cut out one of the other element leaves. This is in Mossy Meadow. And I'm going to get some liquid glue because this is just really tiny. We'll get some green glue on here. This is my favorite glue, by the way. And we're going to put that just right over the top of the other leaf. Offset it just a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to add one of our gold sheer leaves. These are kind of fun, right? And I don't think there's a really a right or a wrong whether this goes forward or this go forward. It just depends on what you want your leaf to look like. I want mine a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'll do it this way, and then I can show you the difference between the two. You can tell me which way you like it better. So I always take my ribbon or element and go to the glue dot, not pick up the glue dot and then try to stick it to something because it ends up in between my fingers all the time. But I want to kind of just slide it underneath these two green leaves here. I guess I could have put that on first, right? But I didn't. I wanted to have my positioning right. Okay. Then I'm going to use a piece of this adorable wild wheat ribbon. Now, it looks like it's just a white and a wild wheat, which it is. But it has almost a shimmer to it because of the type of threading that gets used in it. So it also kind of glimmers a little bit. Camera's not gonna pick that up. And then when I make my bows, I do two loops and then I tie the two loops together. I find that easier than the shoelace where you're kind of like folding it around your hand, especially when I'm dealing with, you know, smaller pieces of ribbon. This works really well. And then I hold the center, pull the tails, then I hold my tails and tighten it down gives you a nice, perfect little ribbon. 
And then we're going to go back to that glue dots again, where I push my ribbon to the glue dot, give it a little pressure. And then when I pick that up, the glue dot is attached to it. I'm just going to pop that down at the bottom of these leaves. My tails are a little long, so let me, let me trim these just a little bit. Have to have the ribbon long enough to be able to hold though, right? So I think it was about nine inches of ribbon. And then for our greeting, this is just a small little piece of lemon lolly. And I'm going to grab one of those verses. They're all super, super great. You know, this one is you are amazing in every single way. And I'm going to tell you right now, you are amazing in every single way. Every person that comes and visits me, I love all of you. And you are all amazing. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, now's a good time to make sure that you do that so that you can uh, see some future cards and get some more ideas and techniques along the way. So this is just old olive ink on top of the lemon lolly, so it shows up really well. And then I'm just going to cut the edges. This is just such an easy way to make a little greeting label without going through a whole ton of work. Just kind of trim those ends. It gives it a little bit more character, right? And then I need a couple of dimensionals on here. Diamonds, ladies, diamonds, her girl's best friend. And all you gents out there, diamonds are great for you guys too. All right, we're just going to kind of pop that underneath there. Put that on there. See why I didn't, it didn't matter because I was putting so much down here. I didn't have to adhere the bottom of this leaf, but I wanted this one to stay a little bit popped up. You can always curl those a little bit, give them a little more character. And then last but not least is some great little gems. These are called faux glass dots. They're almost like a, um, they're kind of a flat look. They're not super shiny. So they're like a little translucent. They're kind of cool looking. And then let's see, what color do I want to put on here? I think I'll put the, I will put the Cajun ones. Whoops. You have one there. Sure, that's a good spot. There's no rhyme or reason when you're adding some of these fun little guys. Get a big one here and do another big one up here. There we go. Just a little bit of added little color in razzmatazz. So like I said, this was the one that I showed you to start with in the crushed curry love these da this daisy pattern it's just absolutely beautiful isn't it it's pretty 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 and then this is in the azure afternoon that i put with this queen anne's lace flower and then here's one that's totally even different we have uh mossy meadow with some fresh freezy so you have like a little bit of a purple going on look at love this beach scene that's back here right that's all just part of the paper so the paper is just beautiful and then just a couple of small elements, and you've really made some pretty stunning fall cards. If you would like to have a card for me, go ahead and leave me a comment and then shoot me a private message with your address, your mailing address. And I'd be happy to send you a card. Um, it's always fun putting a card in the mail, right, to, to one of my special friends. And you guys are all so special to me. Love your comments. Love your ideas. Love your suggestions on anything that you would like to see me do in the future. If you're trying to learn something, give me a shout out and I'd be happy to try to work on it for you and help help you along. But in the meantime, you guys all have a great stamp happy day and I will see you next time.